Welcome to Speaking of Grace, the weekly message podcast from the Whole Life Church in Orlando, Florida. We're a multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-generational congregation committed to our mission of loving people into a lifelong friendship with God. We are committed to our vision of being a church without walls, fully engaged in serving the people of our community. Thank you for joining us as we continue Speaking of Grace. Good afternoon, Whole Life family. In case you don't know me, my name is Alicia Clements. This sermon is a little autobiographical, so I would like to give you some context for who Alicia is. Some main highlights about me are that I've been Seventh-day Adventist my whole life. I grew up in Adventist schools. I have four wonderful and absolutely adorable animals. Yes, I'm biased. They're the best. I love traveling and doing nature photography. I tend to be only a little stubborn, but a lot caring. I'm very nerdy about a lot of different things, and I love being an occupational therapist in a hospital. I volunteer here as a pastoral associate, operating the in-house lyric slides for the songs uh, with Family Promise, and also occasionally doing church event photography. Also, side note, I have the best friends and family, also biased. I'm happy to be here with you guys today, a little nervous, but happy. Now that you guys know me a little bit, let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your ever constant presence. Please be with us today. Help us to be open to what you need us to hear. Help us connect with you on your wonderful day. Amen. So, being a native Floridian, I'm not very used to experiencing what they call seasons, like some people in some other states. Maybe you've felt similar, but I bet that you still have a favorite season and a not-so-favorite season. Which one is your best or your favorite? Which one is your least or your worst? Imagine with me each season and think about what it means to you. Are you comfortable, content? Are you dreading what comes next? Or are you miserable and you can't wait for the next season? If you enjoy spring the most, I imagine it evokes those feelings of hope and new growth, a fresh start. If you don't, maybe pollen, itchy eyes, sneezing. Now, with summer, all of us are very familiar with it as Floridians. It can bring you that intolerable and oppressive heat. Definitely my least favorite. But on the positive side, maybe it brings you those bright sunny days that chases away your blues. Fall is perhaps your welcome relief from that heat. And if you travel, it gives you beautifully changing leaves. It's definitely my favorite season, so it's a little hard for me to think of something negative. But maybe you think of it as a harbinger of that winter that's next to come, and you look on it with dread. With winter, maybe in the north it just dazzles you with the snow. In the Florida, we get that quiet, lower temperatures. Maybe it smothers you with snow when you're up north. And down here, maybe the 30s are a little too cold for you. Ecclesiastes talks about many different kinds of seasons, though it is usually more about the seasons of life than the changes in weather. These seasons can bring about the same feelings, of comfort, contentment, misery, dread. The foundational verse for this sermon's theme of when it's just not your season 
is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. There's a time for everything and a season for every, every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to a weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Now, on the first read, each ends of these statements feel so opposite and disconnected. It feels as if it's good versus bad. There have been times that I've felt that pressure that even during the good times, I'm supposed to be living as if I'm in the good times. So growing up in the faith, these verses have been fairly well referenced in sermons to uplift those who are in a troubled time, alluding to the promise that those troubles will only be for a time or a season. This furthers that pressure to be a good Christian and live perfectly faithfully. Just in case you didn't know, Christians have flaws too. I know, impossible, right? But that means that perfectly anything doesn't really exist. If we take a second look at these verses, we do see that it allows for those difficulties of life. There is a time for death to uproot, to kill, to tear down, to weep, to mourn, to scatter stones, to refrain from embracing, to give up, to throw away, to tear, to be silent, to hate, and for war. But what if these struggles aren't only for a time or a season? What if it's multiple seasons? Years? Decades? How do we maintain faith in the goodness of, in God and his plans then? My harsh season lasted a full nine years, almost a third of my life. In late 2015, with a span of three months, I was hit with the discovery of multiple health issues, my maternal grandfather passed, and I started my graduate degree. The health issues came first, one right after the other, before the first one was even being controlled. My grandfather was like a second father to me. He was a strong man with a strong faith. It was sudden. My uncontrolled health issues and grief led to an extremely difficult time in school. The career I knew God had led me to, God's purpose for my life. At first, I felt grief-stricken, angry, confused, scared, and with shaken faith. That all turned into feeling nothing in order to just survive. Winter, had come. That season seemed to start to settle in 2017. Near the end of my graduate degree, a new person entered my life that I thought was the answers to all of my prayers. This person seemed to help me overcome some of that previous season. They comforted my grief. They gave me seemingly good health advice. They supported my shaken faith. They supported me. However, it was a false spring of hope and joy. The relationship turned into an unhealthy and toxic situation. Despite it evolving quickly, I was already too emotionally involved. Has that ever happened to you? That you started to have a connection with another person and it was great at first, 
but then it turned sour. Then you didn't quite know what to do. You kept trying to restore that initial connection, hoping and praying that it could be fixed. Maybe it was a friendship, a romantic partnership, a parent-child relationship, or a co-worker bond. During that pursuit, I became largely cut off from my support system, and new health issues popped up. By winter, resumed. What I felt was similar to the first section in the song, Rise Up, Lazarus. And the dark, and all alone, growing comfortable. Are you too scared to move and walk out of that tomb, buried underneath the lies that you believed, safe and sound, but stuck in the ground, too lost to be found? My brain knew that God was still with me, but my heart felt that absence. I just didn't understand why. Since he can do anything, he wasn't. He could make that toxic relationship healthy. He could miraculously and completely fix my health issues. My frequent torturous thought companion was that I know God can, but will he? I would ask God, why? Why aren't you fixing this? Why aren't you taking away my suffering? How can you say you love me, but you're letting me go through all of this? A number of times over those years, I would be on my bed, curled up, begging for relief. No answer came, just silence. I only rarely felt a warm, comforting presence to carry me through the night. But I wasn't sure if it was just my desperation. <laughs> Despite everything during that time period, I kept trying to pursue my relationship with God. I prayed, though often it was a questioning prayer or one filled with confusion and frustration. I kept trying to let God work through me at my job with patience and kindness. I went to church seeking answers, clarity, peace, anything. <laughs> During services are well-known verses and lyrics of hope, kind of reflected into me as a mixture of hope and pain. Matthew 7, 7 states, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. A potentially lesser known verse, Daniel 2, 21, mentions that he can change those times and seasons. We can also reference popular worship songs, such as uh, Goodness of God. For your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hands. You've led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. Maybe you've had questioning thoughts like I've had. How are these things true when it doesn't feel like my experiences matched? I've sought him. I've had hope in these non-harmful plans. I've known he has the ability to change things for me. How is it possible to keep faith during multiple seasons of questions, pain, and uncertainty? Where is the evidence of this bright future, mercy, and opportunity? Why wasn't his plan aligning with mine? It was clearly a great plan. I mean, who wants to remain in a toxic environment? Who wants to continue to have health issues? 
the only alternative plan I saw was to continue to live with these fluctuating issues and separating myself from what I saw at the time, the only person who loved me, including me. This all lasted until around the summer of 2022. During that summer, I hit a time of rock bottom crisis and I tried to make my own choices for my life. I felt God screaming in desperation and longing for me to stop and listen. But all I heard was a faint voice. So I didn't listen. That event of crisis forcefully propelled me into a different mindset. I made a stubborn resolution. I now absolutely refused to let myself go back to that crisis state. Those that know me know exactly how stubborn I can be. I wound up discovering, with help, a method that finally worked for me to understand the value of me. I finally could reach out to my support system without feeling like a burden, unlike what that special person had told me. Spring had finally started to dawn after seven years. Now, the following happy result is not the point in this sermon, but I wouldn't leave you guys hanging. After a failed attempt at severing that special but very toxic relationship, I eventually was successful. I learned that that love wasn't true or healthy that life-changing and incredibly stressful decision subsequently led to a health crisis. That health crisis meant an ICU admission to my own hospital. Awkward. That ICU admission led me to the decision to have my thyroid removed. At my post-operative follow-up appointment, I was sitting in one of those really uncomfortable patient chairs, unable to speak except a raspy whisper. Incision, itchy with healing. Have you guys ever been in that chair? Wondering what report or test might be coming, full of fear and dread? Well, I received the news that no one wants to hear. My biopsy results had come back positive. My thyroid had had cancer in it. Absolutely reeling, the world became numb around me. Dimly, I started to register what the doctor said next. Because it was caught so early, they were able to get all of the cancer out. I didn't even need to have any more scans or any treatments. So if that incredible level of happiness isn't the point, what is? Let's go back to the sermon title. How do you keep faith and endure when it's just not your season? when it seems like God isn't taking action, and that doesn't really match what you know of his character and ongoing presence. I started to learn that there are three keys. Be absolutely stubborn in your faith in God, but don't be stubborn in the outcome or in the timing. Now, these all seem straightforward and well-known, but life is often anything but simple. So let's start with the first key. Be resolutely stubborn in your faith in God. Note that I did not say belief in God. During an uncertain time, that complete picture that makes belief isn't usually there. Instead, however, we should rely on faith. Hebrews 11.1 helps define this for us a little bit. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. 
faith appears to be an incomplete picture without certain knowledge, but with, instead, hope and trust. So how do we find that hope and trust? I found it helpful to doggedly refer myself back to my two favorite quotes. The first one by Vaclav Havel. He's a Czech playwright, and he addresses our hope. Hope is definitely not the same thing as optimism. It is the conviction, it is not the conviction that something will turn out well, but the absolute certainty that something makes sense, regardless of how it turns out. I have faith that that understanding of God's plan will come when we get to see him in heaven and ask him any questions our little hearts desire. That train of thought was able to bring me a lot of peace, no matter what I was going through. The second quote made by the famous Alicia Clements addresses that trust. God loves you more in one millisecond than all of humanity combined could in an eternity. If someone truly loves, trust is a natural byproduct. Now to the second key, to be stubborn in your faith, but not in the outcome you desire. Jesus himself prays for his own desired outcome in Gethsemane. In Matthew 26, not once, not twice, but three times he asks not to die when he says, let this cup pass from me. While I don't think it's unusual to be prayerful about our desires, Jesus doesn't leave it at just that. Much more importantly, each and every single time, he was ultimately in deference to God's will, and thus, God's outcome. I don't know about you, but not only is that difficult to mean when you're praying, but it's even harder to purposefully put into action. Thus, a helpful prayer might also include asking God to provide us some of his strength to be able to do just that. Being open to not getting what we want is one thing, but we also need to be open to alternative outcomes. During my harsh seasons, I was not open. The only alternatives I did see, I felt were worse than what I was already going through. I couldn't see it at the time, but my prayers were asking for the wrong things for my life. Like asking for snow in the Florida summer, when the closest we can get is a nicely controlled AC room. The circumstances influencing my winter didn't ever change. I did. I became open to the possibilities outside of what I saw or what I wanted with dividing leading assistance. What we want is not what's best or right for us all the time. To the last key, be stubborn in your faith, but not in the timing. Throughout my difficult seasons, I did have family and friends tell me that they were concerned a lot, but it never really fully sank in. With Acts 1 7, it declares, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Let us also refer back to Jeremiah 29 11. But to gain a fuller understanding, context is necessary. Jeremiah 29 is actually a letter to the surviving exiles. Jewish exiles in Babylon. Jeremiah 29.10 says, this is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and I will fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. And then Jeremiah 29.11 
refers to the great plans God has for us. So reading all of this together, my brain wants to say, okay, so let me get this straight. God talks about suffering for 70 years. Some of us might even die during that time, but he has great plans for us. Something doesn't quite click there. But then my mind flashes back to that post-operative follow-up appointment. As I had left that office and called my mom, it had hit me like a ton of happy bricks. If the events of hitting rock bottom, receiving that specific help, severing that relationship, being admitted to the hospital and surgery didn't happen in that exact order or that exact timing, the cancer might not have been caught or removed in time. The lessons I've started to learn and that stubborn resolution I found during my journey would simply not have been possible any sooner. It took me time to realize and then accept what needed to be done with my health and my relationship. I do feel it's important though to not begrudge yourself for not being able to see God's plan or timing sooner. We only hear when we are ready and willing to listen. God's timing and plan for each and every one of our lives may look different. Maybe for some, it's to be single in order to learn to love yourself. Maybe it's starting cancer treatment. Maybe it's transitioning to a new career. This was just my journey and my results. I've also come to believe that God doesn't cause suffering. Sometimes he chooses to use it for a greater purpose. Though sometimes it seems like he doesn't, and I don't really know why. That will be one of the questions I plan on asking him. <laughs> Whatever you may be going through, though, I hope that these three keys will help you. I recently learned that the author of Ecclesiastes 3 wrote it in a Hebrew style of poetry. This style of poetry has a purposeful underlying tension between the ends of each statement. Tension, to me, brings the concept of balance to mind. If one favors one side of the statement over the other, it becomes unbalanced and that tension is lost. This can happen when it's just not your season. And it seems that that time of birth planting, healing, building, laughing, <laughs> dancing, gathering stones, keeping, mending, speaking, love, and peace will never come. I have no idea what the future will hold for any of us. If that future will be overall balance between those light and dark seasons. I may go into another unfortunate season or two, or more. But that is the wonder of the journey of life, I guess. That unknown and the possibility of winding back in our darkest seasons can be pretty intimidating. It has helped me to remember that God and I have made it through some pretty bad ones. No matter what season I stumble into, no matter what season I'm trans transitioning into or out of, there is proof in the pudding that he was there when I felt it, and even more importantly, especially when I didn't. I now have plenty of reminders to let God stay in the driver's seat. My journey has shown, though, that as imperfect Christians, we often get in our own way. And we start to forget these lessons again that we thought were solidified. However, I believe that God will use every type of season that we go through 
to continue to build that foundation of faith. We all struggle at some point, usually multiple points. It might even be a self-induced winter. Thankfully, during any type of winter we go through, we can rely on each other and God to help us remain patient to His timing and open to His outcome. We can have that warm and protective coat of being stubborn in our faith. Hi, this is Randy McGray, podcast producer and host here at Whole Life Church. Loving people into a lifelong friendship with God is our mission at the Whole Life Church, and our podcasts are designed to help facilitate conversations that help us grow together in that pursuit. Now that you've heard the message for this week, don't forget to check out the Whole Life Takeaways for this message. Swipe up in today's show notes and join the conversation. Speaking of conversations, each Wednesday morning we take a closer look at the week's message. That's right, the one you just listened to. We discuss practical ways to apply spiritual lessons and ask honest questions about the issues we face as Christians, all focused through the lens of grace. Your voice is a welcomed addition to that conversation. We encourage your thoughts and your questions by sending a voicemail or text to 407-965-1607 or send an email to podcast at wholelife.church. You can find everything podcast-related on our website, wholelife.church slash podcast. And plan on spending every Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning with us as we bring you the Whole Life Church inspiration you love straight into your headphones. Thanks for listening, and have a great week.